Hey, can I get two hash browns and a large cappuccino, please? Actually, can I make that cappuccino a double shot? Awesome, thank you. I am not a morning person at all. Awesome, thanks. Oh, I always forget the Maccas makes their coffees like 100 degrees. This afternoon, mostly cloudy. Chance of rain, 70%. What's up, guys, and welcome to another mini-series. And I gotta say, straight out of the gate, we've got some phenomenal weather for the trip once again. Seem to have a knack for picking the rainy times of year to go camping, even when it's supposedly still summer, so I don't know what's going on there. But, should be a good trip nonetheless. So welcome everyone to episode one of I just realized a bit of a flaw in my plan. I was thinking instead of just naming a trip after where we're going, I'd pick something interesting that happened on the trip and name the mini series after that. But the problem with that is we haven't actually gone on the mini series yet, so I don't really know what I'm going to be calling it. So, welcome everyone to episode one of this mini series, Name TBC. So what's the plan for today? Basically, I'm heading up north to around the Durian Bay area. As per usual, I know I seem to always go camping around there, but that's pretty much the only place I could find that's not gonna be constantly raining for the next three days. Now, I know you guys are probably thinking, Daniel, you know there's technology around nowadays called a weather forecast. You can actually check when's a good time to go camping. I know, but the thing is, I had this, had this time set aside already to go camping, so it was basically either go away anyway during the rain or to stay at home. And you guys know that I'll always pick camping over staying at home. So here we are, heading away nonetheless. Should be good. I don't really mind a bit of rain anyway, as long as there's a few breaks here and there to get out and enjoy enjoy the wonderful location we're camping in. So I've been up to Durian Bay many times. I know you guys have seen me head up there a few times already, but there's a few places that I've seen like during those other camping trips that I've always thought, I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna camp there sometime. So that's what we're doing. We're gonna head up to Durian Bay and find somewhere to camp. Welcome to camp guys. This is my little setup for at least tonight. It's a windy old day in Durian Bay, which isn't that surprising really, because that's what the weather forecast it was gonna be. And also, literally every time I'm in Durian Bay, it's always windy without fail, so no surprises there. So I did check out those two bays that I was hoping to camp in, the ones that I'd seen during previous camping trips. Both of them way too windy to stay tonight, unfortunately. So I've ended up back in a spot that I've camped at a couple of times before. Some of you might have seen it in a previous mini series. And how's this for ironic, right? So you remember last time I bought the kayak along, hoping to drop it in the water. But when I ended up camping here, because it was windy again, I remember I was up on that hill talking about how it's a great site, nice and sheltered from the wind but unfortunately there was no access straight down to the water, which is right there, because there was like a bit of a rocky cliff area, and then it kind of dropped off down to the water. But as, uh, as chance would have it, I didn't bother with the kayak this time. And since then, since about August last year, the waves have come in and brought sand up, so now you can actually get the whole way down to the water. So I could have dropped the kayak straight in. Anyway, that's just, uh, that's just chance for you. That's just what happens. To be honest, it's a bit windy this afternoon anyway, but the forecast tomorrow, nice and clear, sunny skies, 19 kilometer an hour winds. Fingers crossed it actually pans out to be true. Anyway, it's about the middle of the day, so I might go chuck a bit of lunch on, get that fired up, and I'll probably also set up the awning and the tent now while, while it's not raining, because I do forecast some rain to hit here pretty soon.
Did you guys know that it's been scientifically proven that it's impossible to go camping without forgetting at least one thing? So for me, that's tomato sauce this trip. I've completely forgotten to pack the tomato sauce. Bit of a disaster when I'm having sausages and bread for lunch today, burgers tomorrow night for dinner, so no sauce for either of those. But I do have a bit of a workaround, I think, because tonight for dinner I'm having ravioli, and of course with ravioli comes a sauce, a little something like this. So we've got some delicious tomato and garlic pasta sauce. I'm kind of thinking, it's still tomato to some degree, so how's that gonna taste on, uh, on some sausages and bread? I'm keen to give it a whirl. I think I better just uh, try it on one to start with rather than just go on the whole hog onto both. Oh yeah, delicious. It might actually be better than tomato sauce because you're getting a few, a few extra goodies in there as well. Oh yes, look at that. Good as gold. I suppose I better give it a taste test for you. Can't just leave you hanging like that, wondering if it's any good or not. And don't worry, I'll be completely honest. If it's no good, I'll tell you, and then I'll proceed to eat this one without any sauce. Anyway, cheers guys. Let's see how we go. Actually not too bad. It's definitely got that kind of ravioli taste. It's probably just because I associate that flavor with eating ravioli. But other than that, like you still get your nice tomato -y taste. I reckon that's a winner, there's a camping hack for you. Yum, 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 hey. I tell you what, if nothing else, camping's a pretty good way to get your exercise in. I'm getting pretty close to clocking 10,000 steps today. Not a lot for most people I know, but for someone who works in an office during the week, clocking the big 10K is a pretty big deal to me. So I'm looking forward to my Fitbit buzzing like mad when I finally get there, which is pretty soon we're on about 8,500 at the moment. So just getting back from going for a bit of a walk around the area, I wanted to take the opportunity to check it out, see what's around before all this bad weather starts dropping a lot of rain on us, which I'm sure is about to happen in the pretty near future. Anyway, just about to get back to camp. Probably gonna inspect this GoPro because it suffered a bit of a mishap on the way down today. So the poor little GoPro suffered a bit of a catastrophe this morning. I was heading down and I had it suction cupped outside on the front windscreen, trying to get a bit of road footage when this happened. So at 100 kilometers an hour, the suction cups let go and the poor little GoPro has gone bouncing over the roof of the car, whacked into the canopy, gone bouncing between the canopy and the car before eventually falling down to the road below. And then I guess rolling along the bitumen for a little while. So I heard it as soon as it happened, I was like, oh no. So I pulled over immediately, went running back, expecting to see it in the middle of the road with a truck going straight over it, you know, in a spray of GoPro pieces. But to my surprise, it had bounced its way to the edge of the road. So I went and I picked it up and I had a glass screen protector on it, which was smashed to pieces, as you can see there. But I peeled that off and the lens underneath is still completely intact. So that screen protector was, was a worthy investment. I'm very glad I, glad I installed that. Obviously it wasn't in this case when it was on the car. It was exposed like that. So you can see around the edge, it is a little bit scuffed up on that rubberized section. A bit of damage suffered there. But I'm happy to report it's still fully operational. The, uh, the functionality hasn't been impaired one bit, so that's good enough for me. I'm happy with that. These things happen, and I figure being a GoPro, it's designed to be used outside the car, to be stuck in places where you can't put a conventional camera. So I'm, 
I'm not too, not too bothered by that. So long as it's still working, that's enough for me. Well then, seems like the weatherman well and truly stuffed up the forecast, which is just fantastic news for me. There is nothing but blue skies in front of me. A few clouds behind I know, but the wind's coming this direction, sending them all well away, which is just fantastic. Also, it was supposed to be about 30 km an hour winds at the moment too, but it's a bit of a, bit of a breeze, but nothing too extreme at all. About an hour ago, there's no way I could have sat right here and talked to you guys, because the wind would have been way too strong, but in the last half an hour, it's died off, the skies have blued up and it's just turned into a fantastic afternoon. So I thought I might take this opportunity to chat with you guys about the, the website and a few changes I've made in the back end. So the first update is that I've now changed all the merch to have shipping added on after the fact. Before, everything kind of included shipping wrapped into the price. I thought that was an easy way to, to kind of organise it all. But what it's meant is that if you're buying two things, you are effectively getting slogged for shipping twice. So I wasn't happy with that, so I went back in, changed everything around, bought the price down of everything, and then added shipping on as an extra factor afterwards. So what that means, I know it sounds complicated, what that basically means is that if you're just buying one thing from the website, nothing changes, the price is exactly the same, it's just the item will be a bit cheaper, and then shipping will get added on afterwards, bringing it to the exact same price it was before. But if you buy more than one thing, then it's going to work out basically a lot cheaper for you guys because the shipping is going to be only going to be added one time. Anyway, so that's update number one, hopefully to make things a bit more cheaper for you guys. Second update is that we've now got Exploranger stubby holders on the website. So I'm stoked with these. We've got two designs. That one's called Shoreline, kind of has the beach with the Exploranger logo and the waves kind of lapping up around the logo. That's probably my personal favourite. And the second one is the coastal design. Sorry, a bit of sand got it sitting down there in the sand. So this one's actually a photo I took up at Greenhead. You know, that's one of my favorite campsites if you've watched the channel for a while. So um, yeah, they're both on the website right now if you're in the market for a new stubby holder. I really, really appreciate you guys checking out the merch and a huge thank you to those of you who have, um, who have bought merch in the past and have got a Exo Ranger hoodie or a beanie or I guess a stubby holder now as well. There's never any pressure whatsoever on you guys to buy stuff. Don't feel like you need to or have to. It's purely there if you're wanting to support the channel or just wanting to get your hands on a hoodie or a stubby holder or a beanie. Nothing quite like an afternoon swim to cool you down. That water is unbelievably nice. I could literally spend the whole afternoon just floating around, enjoying the day. If you're from WA and you've only ever swam in the waters like around the city, do yourself a favor, head up north, jump in the water. You won't believe how warm the water is. It's just unbelievable. Anyway, I better get dried off. Can you believe that uh, they actually forecast thunderstorms this afternoon for Durian Bay? Tell you what, if that's what a thunderstorm looks like in Durian Bay, I may as well pack my stuff up and move here. Bit of an update on the old weather front. So I checked the weather app on my phone to see if anything had changed in the last couple of hours and it had. Now there's a severe weather warning with like risk to damage of properties, etc., for the whole Durian Bay area. So we're a little bit north of Durian Bay, so I'm hoping we might just escape the thick of it. That being said, some pretty nasty looking clouds rolling in on the horizon there. So <laughs> might be in for a bit of wild weather after all. All that talk earlier about blue skies, sunny weather. I was swimming in the ocean, laughing, laughing about the weather. Well, this might be Nature's Revenge, which actually might be a fun name for the mini-series, depending on how tonight goes. So my plan now is to head back up to camp, get some dinner on nice and early. It's only about 
I don't know, 5.30, quarter to six, something like that. Get some dinner on nice and early because I'd rather eat dinner early than get stuck in the middle of the storm having to cook dinner in the middle of a storm. Alrighty, time to get some quick dinner underway. Luckily, I kind of planned for it to be pretty stormy anyway, so we're just having some basic ravioli for dinner. Nice and quick and simple to make. You guys would be pretty proud of me too. So a couple of days ago, I went down to BCF to get my gas water refilled. And you know how it goes, you pay for your refill, you go drop your bottle off by the refill station. Then you got maybe five or 10 minutes to kill. So you go back into the store and you start wandering down the aisles, checking out what's for sale. You're proud of me. You know, I wandered through those aisles. I saw all that cool stuff for sale, all those camping gadgets. And I thought, you know what? I want a budget. I don't need any of it. Just, uh, just gonna walk past it, ignore it. You're on a budget, just leave it alone. Just kidding, I couldn't resist buying this pop-up cooking pot. How cool is this thing? So this is that thin when it's folded up. Then take the lid off, push the base in, and you have a five liter cooking pot that's good to go straight onto the flame. So it will work perfectly with the Coleman stove. It's got some, what do they call it? Some food, food grade silicon walls. That's what this blue stuff is here that lets it collapse up into, uh, into something that's really, really convenient to store. And then expand to a five liter pot when, uh, whenever you're ready. So couldn't resist that one as soon as I saw it. I was like, that is an absolute winner. That's exactly what my setup is missing. So gonna be giving that a whirl tonight, making the ravioli. It's a pretty massive pot to be honest. It's like, it's basically a bucket. It's gonna be, it's gonna feel a bit weird like putting something that's essentially plastic onto the stove. But I think so long as I keep the heat down, so it's just staying on this metal area, should be good to go, but we'll give it a test and see how it goes. Imagine if it just melted and just the water just everywhere. <laughs> so far, so good. Oh yeah, that looks pretty done to me. The uh, next question is going to be, how am I going to strain this with a pot that doesn't have like a big handle to just tip? Hmm, interesting. This is going to be so sad if I lose my dinner. Easy peasy. All right, just gonna quickly stir through that sauce and dinner is good to go. There we go, dinner is all done. Pretty basic, but not too bad for a camping meal. Delicious pot of ravioli. So it looks like a lot, don't worry, I'm not gonna pig out and eat the whole lot right now. Plan is to have this for dinner tonight and I'm also going to save. I came prepared, bought a container, I'm gonna save half for lunch tomorrow, so. I don't have to cook lunch tomorrow. There we go, dinner fit for an absolute king. Can't wait to get stuck into that. I might just have enough time to eat this before this storm rolls in, because I don't know if you can hear that, but thunder's growling. I can see the, the clouds are getting darker and darker, so nature's revenge is in full swing, coming soon to a, to a campsite near you or near me. Anyway, might go eat this and then I'll probably come back, chuck the awning away and then retire up to the tent for the night. Woohoo, we made it. Whoa. I hope you guys can hear that thunder. Jeez, that sounds intense. That's like nature letting us know, okay, you're up in bed now. Now I'll we'll kick that storm in. I really hope you can hear that. Before I got some awesome footage of some lightning bolts, so I'll chuck that in here as well. Anyway, guys, that brings us to the end of night one. I'm just gonna hang out in the tent before, before going to sleep. Bit of a roller coaster of a day with expecting the rain. Been getting that beautiful afternoon, swimming in the water. Absolutely fantastic. And now I get treated to some nice rain to go to sleep to. I can just, just hear the rain started now. So timing couldn't be any better. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you guys tomorrow for the next episode.